Patch 1.024 officially comes on the 11th of April, which isn't too long from now. And everyone's asking, obviously, for my rundown and my thoughts and opinions. So we're going to go through all of this. Plus, I'm going to give you guys a beginner's tip quickly in Season T1. So stay tuned for all of that information after this. Hello guys, yes, smash the like, comment down and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneaker. We're still here with Call of Dragons. I've not forgotten you guys. We've just slowed down the content, like I said, because we're doing some other projects, which we're actually having a lot of fun with too. But to start things off, Toha. A lot of people have been wondering when Toha officially appears in your daily, right? Because you can see I'm able to buy him if I need to and try to unlock him. So just to give you guys that info straight away, if you go to your August stone, he will appear when your unscarred August stone progress launches. It's the day after. So it's around three or four days this event and you get on the second day, he should appear. Once he's appeared, you guys know it normally takes around four or five days for that cooldown to be finished and then as you want you can spend your money so i'll give you guys that tip and trick before we break down this patch so let's get into all the patch notes that you actually need to worry about so when it comes to the patch it does come out on the 11th of april like stated in the intro and the thing is that a lot of players are probably having a bit of a downer with we're going back to belleron hello i'm in the club room wasn't there another side of this that was also the uh, wrong room? Uh, yeah, not my room. Uh, not my room. I'm going to say that. Not not my room. Yes, we are going to Belleron Season B2, but it's going to be the final or finished map, hopefully. So let's see if it's been improved and hopefully they listen to our outcry of not having so many choke points. Hopefully nowhere near as many spires on every single choke point and just make it a little bit more open field and allow all the troops, you know, to experience it, right? So that's where we're first going with things and then more importantly, seasonal talents are going to be back. So who knows if they're going to be the exact same trees or are they going to do what we've been hoping they, they do and make each tree an individual one, right? So you've got an infantry tree, an archer tree, a mage tree, a cavalry tree, and maybe they had a fifth one, which is something to do with like PVE content, you know, so you can help yourself, right? So we'll see how these come back. This is going to come straight into the season talents. So then mainly in this big thing that we're going to first talk about is the new heroes. And like I have been saying in my pre-season video, link will be above um, on top and anytime around now. But basically click on that link and you would have heard me telling you guys, look, there's going to be a new patch. It's going to come. And I'm telling you, there's going to be new generational free heroes coming. Some people didn't believe me and said, you know what? We're not going to try and wait for certain weird superstitions. We're just going to spend our gems currently, right? And you can see already Zayda and Magra, two brand new marksmen. We don't know what they're going to do apart from marksman garrison precision, meaning I think Magra will be more single target based, right? Because precision is a very single target DPS, you know, orientated tree. But Zayda being on the lucky spin is something we can get. And if you've been following my guide, you know I'm on about 90 tickets and I'm easily going to have 100 tickets to spin on Zayda day one, which is fantastic, right? And we're going to see if she's going to be good or not. She's maximum PvP mobility, which is great. She has the maximum and PvP tree, which is a really deadly combination. And she actually has mobility, which might open up some future builds, who knows, who knows, right? So we're gonna have to experiment with her. Can't wait to see her actual abilities. Same with Magrats. And then the final thing we're gonna talk about in this little section is the new, obviously, artifact. And it's a maximum based artifact. It's only gonna be accessed in Forge of Light and the Riches of the Forest. Unfortunate for us, I know, but it is what it is. They have to get money out of us somewhere, right? So that is gonna be the main section there. Let's go into the next section, which I think is gonna be a lot more important and a lot more in depth. So the next part of the patch I want to talk about is all the war pet changes, right? I've got the war pet screen so you can understand what I'm talking about, and then we'll bring up the patch notes just to again clarify and justify what I've been saying to you guys. But in the season three video, we've been telling you try and prepare 
for this update because what you're going to be able to do with this update is depending on what skills or what war patch you want to work on for example i could work on this night rock here because it's a decently pumped out night rock or maybe i go for my snow peak rock who knows even a venomous lizard right i could do any of my pets but what I'm able to do now is go to this skill and actually upgrade it. I'm able to use my own skills to upgrade this from a one star up to a two star or from a two star to a three star. So it's going to allow me to actually get rewarded for grinding. And on top of this, what they're adding in, which is even more important, is the way skills are going to be released so before or currently when you're releasing these skills you're obviously rolling a random chance of not getting a skill or getting a skill right however now you're guaranteed to get a skill if your war pet has a skill on it so you can see i'm trying as well to get a zero star skill save and like a one star skill save to see the difference of xp you get between them right so you can see what is worth it and what's not but the beautiful thing is i'm able to try and get these skills and then again i could use maybe if i don't need these skills to upgrade right i could upgrade some other skills that i have on other pets that they're already using so it's a really good feature for us it's a lot more friendly we're basically allowed now to evolve our pets upgrade our pets and make our pets stronger all the time instead of just keep rolling the random chances every single day right and we can see this in the patch notes so again if you want to scroll down in the smoother um, point of prosperity here in section three you can now upgrade the star ratings of your war pet skills by consuming skill cards this applies to both talent skills and the common skills and then you can obtain talent skills by releasing war pets each time you release the war pet you're gonna get one card of that war pet if you have no pet uh, no skills on that pet you're gonna get an, a random reward so it's pretty simple everything else here is honestly really nice quality of life stuff to do with like upgrading auto regeneration as well as increasing the capacity you can hold and stuff so there is quite a lot in here but those are the ones you're really going to take notice of because everything else honestly you'll start to play and you'll feel the benefit from playing i can see them slowly allowing players a little bit more leeway and actually accessibility into this game mode which is really good so now we're going to go into the next little points of this patch there's quite a lot of little bits and bats that i'm just going to cover and it will just help you guys understand what this patch is changing so when you go into pvp should make you a little bit better so on pvp stuff the main thing for a lot of mobile players what will be really really happy even though it's not on screen they have made simple mode even simpler so they've made it even better for you guys so hopefully if you're in simple mode now and adding simple mode to the pc client too if you've got a really bad pc you're gonna hopefully have the frames right and you're not gonna lag in pvp which is great but when it comes to actual pvp itself there's gonna be a big meta shift i think because there's a lot of changes coming two classes and i'm going to speak to again some other players later down the line about these changes properly i do have an interview already lined up with pervy sage about cavalry that comes out tomorrow and it's more about talking about the state of them in t1 and what he was hoping to see and obviously now this patch coming out it's kind of going to be really interesting to see what the next maybe interview with pervy is going to be like right so what we're talking about here is basically they've buffed in my eyes they've buffed infantry units and they've kind of lowered the the benefit of cavalries right they've made them a little bit weaker in regards to their pvp capabilities right and the re reason we're saying this is before when you're playing a range um well a, an infantry unit it used to be saying as you can see in this top text where the mouse is now previously you would launch counter attacks and you deal half of your like counter attack damage to them or something like that right but now what this does is you deal 50% counter attack damage and you also get a 50% chance to get a stack of ironclad which is a brand new mechanic and each stack of ironclad reduces the range of damage taken by 5% for 15 seconds this um, effect can be triggered by the same enemy legion once every 18 seconds so what this means is if you are running in as an 
infantry main and you're instantly getting that 8x swarm you're gonna get a 40 percent reduced damage taken right and then it's gonna be lasting for 18 seconds for every new person that hits you you'll get a refresh on the timer However, you need to wait obviously 18 seconds in order for the other players that have already hit you to refresh their, you know, timer again, right? So it's pretty simple, right? Really good tanking. I'll see how good this is as well for myself because I've been playing infantry quite a lot as a T4, like 0.5 player and I've got pretty good infantry lineups. So I'm happy to see this. And then they've adjusted as well the uh, offensive talent of intrepid right so intrepid was a very uh, more um offensive role of a talent based in different units right this one says you can see when casting raid skills your legion normal attack focus increasing their normal attack crit rate by one percent for five seconds right this was in the precision tree if you wonder what this is it's the really good crit what we ran in the precision tree but now they're changing it and i think it's even better to be honest it's really good when your legion launches a normal attack they have a 100 per chance to, uh, to get the normal attack focus which is great and then increasing their normal attack crit rate by eight percent right this is amazing i love it i love how it's a different mechanic now they understand what players want to do and they're kind of just giving you it and it's increased right instead of being crit rate by five percent this is a crit rate by eight percent for five seconds right so but they've put the nice little extra text i think to balance it out this can affect only trigger at once every eight seconds i think it would be fine still it's going to be good in pvp for the archer players everyone's probably still going to take it it's going to do some insane good damage for like syndrome still and freya so really 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 good but when we come to the cavalry stuff it's a little bit more let's just say crazy because here is some um turret changes that's why i'm kind of skipping through it all they've done is made the uh, frost turret deal less damage but increase the slow per level which is really nice um but when it comes to the cavalry stuff which we actually want to talk about you can see they've changed the cavalry vanguard right um, this is going to be interesting to see what this is going to be. Um, but when it says previously, when your cavalry units launch unyielding rush at the targets, the rush speed and your range is increased by 50%. So this was allowing, I didn't make a video on it because I didn't want to spoil it for everyone. But this is when you saw players able to do them super long berserker rushes with cavalry. And the way they was able to do that was basically position a cavalry on the river or close to the river and target someone who they need to target right and if they're close enough it'll just do the whole charge the whole 40 second charge will be a berserker rush charge which is insane so they've changed it now to say when your cover units you launch an unyielding rush at the target so this is when you're actually rushing at the target now so this is how it used to be before Rush speed is increased by 20%, which is really good. And it says each time your cavalry unit successfully rush a ranged unit, their attack is increased by 2.5% for a maximum of 10% for 10 minutes, right? And this timer resets each time the effect is triggered. The cool thing about this ability, I will say it's a really cool play style. However, cavalry don't play like this, right? Because the way this wants you to play as a cavalry player is kind of run in, hit one of these ranged units and run out, right? And a lot of the time, cavalry, if they run in, they just die. Let's just be honest, people. They just, they get shredded. So that it's not good for them, right? But if they're able to technically get one, two or three hits off, they're going to get a massive 7.5%, 10 points, you know, 10% increase of attack. But I don't know how good this is going to be. And the sad thing is, well, this is again tailored to cavalry it's not tailored to the elk riders for the spring warden so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future for the elk riders because it seems like they're not getting any love for any spring wardens main i know a lot of players are mad about that which is kind of you know it is what it is but hopefully they upgrade and actually buff them right because i think elk riders need a little bit of love 
Wyvern Riders definitely need a little bit of love in this game as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in the future. So that's kind of all the PvP stuff I want to cover on that regard. I'm now just going to cover some last little bits that, you know, you might just want to hear. If you want to hear, that's great. If you want, you can skip through this bit of the timestamp and go to the summary. And I've got some announcements for you guys. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. So first things first to finish everything up, remember if you've not read through this and you've just watched my video instead, please just click on your mail, scroll all the way down, click the little link you see there and it's going to allow you to get some free gems. Every gem helps you guys as you can imagine. But all the extra improvements, right? You can see they're adding some extra emojis into the chat windows. These are just like, you know, your little popcorn skeleton stuff instead of like the thumbs up we've got and like the little happy faces. But then they're adding 20 dynamic heroes as well, which is so much better because I already said as soon as they brought this out, I was so upset they only brought out the pay to win heroes. So I cannot wait to see these next 20 because this is going to be amazing for the game. And I know some of them are going to be really funny to watch. But then on top of all of this, there's a lot of issues they've changed or fixed. The fixed Craig, the fixed the Sand Lizard as well. If you guys were using the Sand Lizard, it was broken at the time. They've improved the marching order as well of the automatic feature. I personally don't use it because it slows you down in combat. And that's one of the things that we were telling you guys not to do. And then on top of all of this as well, the Behemoths. The Behemoths is actually really interesting because they've changed the way Behemoth at normal difficulty run. So at normal difficulty, there's no participant limit. Meaning, even if you're a T3 alliance, for example, you don't have to worry about only sending 40 players in now. If you've got a 60-man alliance, you can send all 60 T3 players in to actually allow you to hopefully kill your behemoth in your season, right? Which I actually think is a really cool way. So they've basically made all normal difficulties, you can see, no longer have participant limits, which is gonna be crazy, because I cannot wait to see the very first ever 200 man normal Frost Dragon raid, because that is gonna be insane to see, right? But on top of this, there's also some extra bits like Behemoth summoning increases where like, they will interfere with actions for the Behemoth Master, which is great for PvP. And then they just increased difficulty, oh not increased, they adjusted the difficulty for Dragon Trial stages. So if any of you guys are struggling on Dragon Trials, that is it, right? You're going to be happy as days, you should be able to pump through. And that honestly is pretty much summing up everything you need to know. There's a lot of other little quality of life changes in this. You can probably check them out yourself if you want to. Stuff like, you know, AoE won't affect Darklings and that's a big poggers for everyone. But you can check them out. I've gone over everything I think you need in this patch, what you're going to need to know. And obviously shown you it, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it's an okay patch. I'm happy with all the changes, apart from obviously not going back to Bellerum, but we'll see what the Bellerum map is going to look like. Hopefully it's not a mess like the last two times we've played it. But who knows? Who knows? I cannot wait. And I hope you guys cannot wait either. So give me your feedback. Put your comments down below. You know what to do. We're here to give feedback to the devs. Even though I am not, you know, an official Call of Dragons content creator, I'm here giving the hard you know, hard evidence. I'm here giving the honest opinions. If you guys want to talk trash about the game, talk trash about the game in the comments. I do not care, right? Because I'm here to try and give you guys a voice and your own opinions as well. So, with all of that, smash the like button, subscribe, stay safe, stay sneaky, and I'll check you out, guys, in the next video.